Welcome back. Today we're going to start our three-part mini-series on my process for creating art for games. This is going to be using a program called Affinity Designer. I highly recommend it. It costs 55 bucks currently. It's a one-time purchase, so you don't need to purchase any updates or do a yearly subscription or anything like that. It's quite fantastic. The other main selling factor of Affinity is that it can both do vector and rasterized art, where vector art is art that can scale up to any size without losing quality. So it's perfect for graphical design because you can make a logo and put it on a business card and a billboard and still use the same file to do so. Rasterized art or pixel art, I'll use these two terms interchangeably, is art that you can have some more texturized effects. So for example, like a wood texture or something like that. However, it does not scale well and becomes pixelated when you blow it up. The workflow I like to use incorporates both vector art and rasterized art. Once you open up this program, you'll be greeted with this new document screen. You can have some presets set up here if you want to set them up, but by default, you won't have any. We're gonna go over to this layout panel and you're gonna set your height and width of your canvas. I recommend working in pixels for anything digital. I like to do 1024 by 1024 as a good starting point. I use this for all my texture work as well as for most kind of one-off art projects. The DPI is the dots per inch, and this is how many dots are in each inch of your screen effectively. So it's the resolution. That's another way of phrasing it. I like to put it at 300. It's a pretty good one for print and digital. Um, if you want a smaller fire file size, you can lower it down to like 96 but do know that you'll have a slight reduction in quality if you reduce this. The next relevant section is the color. So there's three color options that we care about, RGB 8, RGB 16, and CMYK 16. RGB 8 and RGB 16 are very good for anything digital. So if you're only gonna be producing something for digital output, like a web document or for a video game, you can stick to RGB. However, if you ever want to print anything, use CMYK because that is how printers work. They use cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink to make the color combinations of whatever you're printing. The 8 and the 16 are your color depth. So it's the amount of colors you have available to you and how smoothly the transition will be in things like gradients. Higher number means there's a smoother transition and you have more colors available. The human eye can't really perceive the color difference, so it doesn't matter that much. The only point where we will see a difference is with gradients and how smooth they are. So I'm gonna select RGB 16 for this document. I'm gonna make sure to check my transparent background checkbox to make sure that we do not have a white background. And then I'll just hit create. Now we have our document. Let's go over a couple of the layout aspects of Affinity. Earlier when I mentioned that you can switch between raster and vector art, these are the two buttons to do so. So the affinity icon is the vector option. They call it designer persona. And then the pixel persona is the rasterized art option. You notice all of our tools and everything switch depending on which one you're on. We are gonna focus on the tools that are relevant to us. In our case, because we wanna focus on sketching and concepting our acts, we are going to focus on the Pixel Persona tools. As a side note, I do recommend using a drawing tablet. I will link below two tablets that I recommend. I have both used XP Pen tablets and Wacom tablets, and I recommend both of them. You don't need to use it because of the art style we will be using. Uh, we can cheat a lot of the tablet work by using uh, vector brushes, but I do advise it because you can get a lot cleaner strokes. And if you definitely want to be serious about getting better at art, you should just use it. So the first tool that we care about is our pen brush tool. So this just allows us to draw a stroke. And you can select from our brush menu here what brush you want to use. Now I have some additional ones available to me because of the packs that I have bought, but the default ones are just fine. Although the easy trap to fall into is always searching for the right brush. It's not really about the brush. It might make life easier on you to have a specific brush for a job, but if you can use a basic brush well, it doesn't matter which brush you are using. When it comes to stroke, so I'm gonna just draw a line here. We can modify it by erasing it by pressing E or using the, the E tool. 
then the other relevant part of it is something called stroke quality. So this is going to be how smooth your stroke is. You can change the size of your brush by hitting the square brackets on your keyboard. You can see how the indicator gets bigger or smaller when you do that. Most brushes already have a default size attributed to the brush. Those are these numbers over here that I recommend trying to stick to most of the time because the brushes are designed to look good with that particular resolution. But sometimes if you like the way it looks when it's bigger or smaller, go for it. So one practice you can do to work on your line quality is to draw straight lines in a single direction and try and make each line match the line before it. So I'm doing this with the mouse, so it's not going to be perfect. I'm also not the best at this kind of stuff, but I do know all the basics and I know enough to make my art look good for games. And that's the important part. You do not have to be a Picasso. You just have to be good enough to make art that doesn't look completely awful. There are different types of game developers as well. Some game developers will lean very heavily into programming, so they'll have a lot of cool systems and mechanics and all that. And their art will be passable. Then others are very big in the art side of things, so they'll have these great atmospheres, everything will feel uh, very moody and stuff. Thomas Brush is one of these, but his programming is passable. Like, it's not particularly good, it's not bad, it functions, but there's not a huge amount of mechanical depth that you will find in his games. But you do get excellent storytelling and excellent atmosphere. That's just one developer by example. So one method of getting better with your strokes is just doing this practice over and over again. I recommend doing this as a warm up before you start drawing. Another thing you can do is drawing circles. So you want to just go around and draw circles. Now, one thing that you will notice, and this is a little bit more relevant on the drawing tablet than with a mouse, because it's just how mice are, is you can draw from one of three places. So if you draw from your wrist, it's very easy to do a curved line like this. However, if you want to draw something bigger, you can also draw from your elbow. So in this case, my wrist isn't moving much, but my entire arm is shifting around my elbow's pivot. So that allows me to do more of a bigger stroke like this. And then the last place is your shoulder, where you can move your entire arm to get kind of a even larger turn. Now, these are things that will not come naturally to you. I am still working very much on my elbow and shoulder movements as I'm still pretty relatively new to the type of freehand art style, I do recommend focusing on it. If it's recommended to determine which one you're using is what's the size of the thing you're drawing. If it's something small, you can do it with your wrist. If it's something medium sized, do it with your elbow. And if it's something larger, do it with your shoulder. It's always a good idea to try and get smooth lines, even if they aren't particularly even. So what I mean by this is one stroke to do like a curve like this. So say this is an axe plate. You wanna do this in one stroke rather than doing a bunch of little scratchy strokes. And the reason for this is you will improve a lot more by doing one stroke. You will be training your arm how to move in a large angle or in a single stroke that it's not used to doing. Whereas normally when you like write and stuff, you're used to very small strokes. You can get a scratchy look like that, but it's not gonna look very clean and it's not gonna look very neat. So for this art challenge, what I want you to do is if you come up here, you go to your select tool and you go up to this ruler. If you don't see your rulers, just go view, show rulers, and you can drag from the side here different blue lines. Now these are lines that exist on your canvas, but they will not exist on the drawing itself. So make a couple of sections, and then what we're gonna do is in each of these sections, we're going to draw a different variant of our ax. We don't have to be particularly amazing about this. I want you to take about a minute, minute and a half, something like that, working on each of these. Focus on getting your strokes decently, and go from there. The idea here is to just have fun with it. What we want to do is create different ideas and concepts for our axe. So this could be like maybe a short stubby axe. Maybe you have one that's got like, you know, one of those ridiculously long edges. 
that arc up like that and then right here you have your axe shaft coming out like that kind of like a dw dwarven style or what have you just have fun with it if you are not quite sure where to place an edge you can do long smooth strokes on top of each other till you get the edge that you like that is perfectly fine does not have to be all super smooth we're not using these lines for our actual art this is just to get our idea what we're going to do in the next video is draw on top of these in a smoother manner by trying to isolate or with the idea of trying to isolate our line work so right now we're just kind of sketching we're getting the idea down then we can cheat and we don't have to be perfect at drawing a smooth line we can just use vector magic to do so so for instance if i wanted to do this line right here i can just click here and here and then bend this line and boom i've got a perfectly smooth line so don't worry about making perfectly smooth lines or beautiful curves just focus on getting comfortable using your pen or your mouse and get your ideas down I hope you found this useful. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons, comment below if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next one.